So Grid Autosport is out next week. It's out on the 19th of September for $34.99. And I'm a little surprised with this port, mostly because it has now solved the big issue that a lot of people have had with the Switch when it comes to simulation racing games. And I can't believe that it's Grid Autosport that has solved this in this genre. Yeah, the problem we've run into with the Switch is that there is no way to have analog triggers at this time, at least that we've thought in game, because, well, the Pro Controller does not have them. They have digital triggers. The Joy-Con controllers are all digital as well, and what that means is either it's pressed or it's not pressed. There is no in-between. There's no, like, half press, quarter press, none of that. And if you use the triggers on something like an Xbox One or a PlayStation 4 controller, there is travel, and that will uh, basically control how much throttle, for example, you're giving a car. So if you're racing around, you want to feather the throttle around a corner, you can do that, whereas with the Switch, it's just full open throttle, and you're, you're basically letting off of it and then pressing it again. And you end up really just tapping the button over and over again if you've played any of the other games like, uh, what, Gear Club or anything, even, uh, I guess, Mario Kart that's what you end up doing. The alternative is to map it to the right stick, and uh, ugh, who, wants to, who wants to do that, right? So what did Feral Interactive do? Well, in order to show you that, we're going to need a GameCube controller. Now, technically, they're not the first game to use a GameCube controller to take advantage of the analog buttons on it for racing games. I know Trials did something similar, but Feral Interactive went above and beyond with this port. Like, I'm, I'm honestly a bit surprised with how much time they seem to have put into this port to move it over to the Switch and give it a pretty good experience on the system, one that you can pretty much craft to your own liking. And I'm going to show you some of the game here, but I will admit I'm not far enough into the game now to feel comfortable talking about it in a review sense or anything, but I'll show you guys some gameplay. I'll show you some of the options because that's like the biggest thing for some racing games is what can you do to, uh, to kind of customize the experience to your liking. And I want to show you the functionality they've added in because it's well beyond what Trials did. See, Trials with the GameCube controller, you would be able to plug it in and it just it just worked and it was weird. And we weren't really sure if it was supposed to work, but it did. Uh, it's supposed to work in, in Grid Autosport. So much so that the GameCube controller has its own menu. So first of all, I know some of you like to see the icon. There's the Grid Autosport icon. I think, I think it's fine. It's basically the, the cover of the game for the most part. And we're going to go ahead and jump in here. Now, if, uh, if you have not already, you want to change the video quality to 60 frames per second because this game does have a quality and performance mode, and that kind of changes the, uh, the frame rate up and everything. So I'm recording this at 60 just to show you the difference kind of in fluidity and everything and responsiveness for the game. Now, to get started here, uh, I'm going to be using just the standard Pro Controller to go through the menus and everything, and then I'll be switching over to the official WaveBird controller from Nintendo. This is the one that I got in the previous video and I use it for all of my GameCube games and currently I have it plugged into the switch through the uh, through the the GameCube USB adapter and we're gonna go in here now there are some other things I wanted to mention there will be a, th these are notes that were sent to me there will be a a what they've said is a high res car texture pack I I'm not really sure what that's gonna look like or what that's completely gonna change but they will have something to that degree where you can have the option to download it on release day. Yeah, that's not going to be available until September 19th. So unfortunately, I can't show it to you here. But uh, from what I'm gathering, that's going to update the textures on the cars or make it look better or whatnot. Uh, just so you're aware and uh, you'll, you'll be able to trigger that on release day. Unfortunately, can't do it here yet. So... Here is the, the menu real quick. You have career, extra championships, custom cup, time trial, and everything. I want to go over to the options menu first, okay? Before we get into a race and I can show you some of the stuff. We do have controls, options, uh, languages. But the biggest thing here, let me get into the options real quick. We do have 
all types of audio settings you can go through you can change different volumes even for the engines if you want to turn that down because it's like it's annoying to you uh the speech you can also change the uh dynamic range and your system eq for small speakers headphones so if you're playing in handheld mode you can change that or large speakers i have set small speakers is fine i don't actually even have my headphones in and then you can change the optimization for performance or graphics I'm actually going to start with graphics mode, and then we can jump over to, to uh, performance. I have a pretty good comparison that I took at one point when I was uh, heading down a straightaway to give you a good example, but I'll stick with graphics. What we have here is graphics is uh, capped at 30, and it's I have to admit, it's a pretty stable 30 frames per second. So if you were fine playing something like uh, Forza Horizon 3 on the Xbox One, or you were fine playing something like Drive Club, you'll be right at home with with this mode uh the other mode being the performance one is if you want the highest frame rate possible at the sacrifice of visuals basically when i changed over to it i lost things like uh shadow detail uh, i think they had like a almost like a depth of field that disappeared and then some background things that you might not notice when you're speeding down the raceway but it, what it did was uncap the frame rate okay so it was not, it's not a stable. Okay, it's definitely not always 60 frames. I, I have a feeling it bounces between like 40 and 60, depending on what's happening. It is noticeably more responsive, but it's also noticeably more, uh, I guess, jittery would be the best way to describe it. So you can kind of take a pick there. I'll leave it on graphics so you can just see the overall uh, best that they can show you visually for it. You can also play around with the HUD if you'd like and the camera. So they do have quite a few options there. Let's jump into controls. So this is where things get very interesting. This is what got me excited. Originally on Twitter, I saw that they had tweeted out that there was GameCube controller support. And I said, okay, okay, Feral Interactive, whatever, whatever you say, right? Okay, well, they said, yeah, here, here's an entire menu for the GameCube controller. <laughs> this was, this blew me away by the, by the way. Um, but we have handheld or pro controller, which is pro controller. Uh, dual Joy-Con, the solo Joy-Con, horizontal, of course. I guess if you want to do uh, split Joy-Con play, you can. There are enough buttons there. And then we have the GameCube controller. This is very impressive, mostly because you can uh, you can add a new configuration. You can change stuff around how you want. It's it's very very impressive. You can uh, you can change any of the buttons to where you want so you can you can have acceleration if you don't want it to be a part of the analog shoulder button if you want it doesn't have to be uh, and then they have different settings for the pro controller to try to combat the idea that you don't have a digital you have digital triggers right so in order to fix that they then map it to the right stick i don't like that personally it's called the classic analog and that just means that obviously pushing the right stick forward accelerates you pull back brakes and because there's travel there and it can detect several different um modes you can of course uh feather the throttle or slowly uh stop come to a stop with the brake but the game control lets us do that so it's exciting stuff let's uh let's go back here and we'll just get into a time trial the reason i'm gonna get into a time trial is because i can just kind of mess around i don't have to worry too much about uh about any of the uh, other cars running into me while I demonstrate this stuff. Okay, so I've come to a complete stop here in the car, and what would happen now is if I just touch ZR, it's an immediate throttle, a 100% throttle. Like, there's no... I can't feather it, and if I press ZL, it immediately comes to a crashing halt there. Uh, even if I just... If I just try to... Just, there's no... There's no, like, feather. Like I said, you're just, you're just going all day like that. And that's been the biggest problem we've had with simulation racers, where you are racing around a track and you'll get obviously your guideline here right and it's going to go red it'll go orange and it's expecting you to slowly start to kind of just touch on the brakes so you can go around the corner better that's not really doable with the digital triggers here and that's the biggest problem now i'll race around an nsx uh r but what i'm going to do is i'm going to jump over to a different race i took and i'm going to show you the comparison between performance mode and quality mode so it starts out in quality mode going down the straightaway and then I'll just go ahead and fade into a performance mode for you. And you can see it becomes much, much more stable. It just looks a lot better overall in terms of responsiveness. And that, that's kind of the idea. You know, you get better frame rates, you're, you're good to go. So uh, you can see that there is a much, much smoother 
visuals when that happens, but uh, you do lose your, your quality in the game. Now, they also have car damage, so I went ahead and crashed this thing into the side of the wall when we were doing that comparison, and you can see I'm missing my door. <laughs> it's also torn up on that side. So they, they do have damage to the car and everything, uh, and, and that's kind of neat. But, you know, overall, I look at this game just from what I've played so far, and it does look pretty good. It's probably... I mean, it looks better than Gear Club, I'll say that. It's smoother than Gear Club. It has more options. To get. Basically, I would just get this over Gear Club, to be honest. It's also cheaper, strangely. Um, but I think Feral did a very good job on this port. Like, overall, this is not a this is not a port that they did uh, and just threw it onto the system. That's what I was originally worried about, by the way, was that they were just going to throw the game onto the system and be like, okay, you guys don't have a lot of simulation racing on the Switch, uh, so... Here's, here's Grid. Uh, it d has, like, barely any features or anything to it. No, they went they went all out with this thing. So, how about we do this, okay? Right here, I'm going to pick up the GameCube controller, right? We're going to use the Wave Bird. I'm going to turn that guy on. And we're going to go ahead, because you can do it in real time. We're going to jump right over to it. The game immediately detects it. As you can see, my A and B have changed to green and red to match this. Now we have the ability to feather the throttle. And you can see I'm slowly doing this. So, of course, I have some travel. You can see the red line there. I've turned it on on purpose so you can see it. And you can see me slowly kind of tick that. See that? And then I can all of a sudden press it down and we'll, we'll gun it. Or I can kind of let off of it and slow it down a little bit. Or then I can gun it again. Uh, same thing with the brakes. So, you can basically hold this guy down slowly. And you'll slowly come to a crawl. And then I can just, just straight up gun it there. So it does have the ability, and this is this is outstanding. I need to see this from basically at this point, we've accepted that the Pro Controller and the Joy Cons have digital triggers, right? So people are buying GameCube controllers for it, and uh, and hey, take advantage of it. You know, these companies take advantage of the fact that we can plug in game controllers that have analog triggers. Now, there's one thing I want to say to Farrell because they said they were going to check the video out and everything when I put it up. Uh, I have controllers that sync to the Switch that have analog triggers, and they're not GameCube controllers. So, I don't know if this is possible. For example, the 8-Bit Doe SN30 Pro Plus has analog triggers. I checked it. It doesn't work that way. Uh, it works just like the, the regular Pro Controller. If they can add a, just an option in that we can use analog triggers with the Pro Controller as an option, right? That would be amazing, because then... All we'd have to do is get just a separate controller for it, right? We can just get the 8-bit Do SN30 Pro Plus. I know people are using PS4 controllers right now with their uh, with their Switch, and that would work fine too. So I don't know if it's possible. I re I'm really unsure because they are specifically using the GameCube controller, and it has to seemingly has to be uh, one that connects through the GameCube uh, port itself. It it doesn't work with uh, anything that would sync up to it. Otherwise, uh, this. This would be really, really cool if they get this done, and it would solve the biggest problem we have with the simulation racing genre on the Switch, and that's the digital triggers. Nintendo hasn't done anything that released an analog trigger or analog trigger on a, on a Joy-Con or anything, or a Pro Controller. So, unfortunately, this is what we're left with, but I like, I like the, uh, the thought process here. The creativity. It's really, really cool. So, I'm hoping... Uh, I'm hoping we see more of this, and uh, I'm hoping other games do the same thing. But hey, hats off to Feral Interactive for taking the time to make what is, uh, I think, a very good port. Really. Uh, also, here, how about this? I'm going to drive straight a little bit here because it's a bit faster than the one I showed before. And I'm going to switch over to performance mode to close it out. So we're going in quality mode right now. I'm up to uh, 100 miles an hour. I'm about to crash in some cones, but... No worries there. Options. Um, we can do this in real time, so we'll change to performance. You can see that the tree line and everything change. Become, it kind of goes from that, that depth of field blurriness to nothing. <laughs> they just get rid of it. Uh, and then we'll go back, back, and now we are racing at what, what appears to be... Uh, it's hard to tell. It's it's not, like I said, it's not a lock 60 or anything, but it, it does look much better to my eyes right now. And I'm sure yours, if you have the... Uh, if you have the 60 frames per second option on down in the settings for YouTube down there. I hope other companies also adopt this, but um, good stuff there for Grid Autosport. Look out for some other coverage on it. I wanted to wait for that big texture pack that drops on release day to really take a look at the visuals. But for now, I just wanted to point out that option because I thought it was really, really cool to use a wave bird that this game's been designed for in, in uh, 2019. Let me know what you guys think about this down below. Is this the way we fix it or do we need Nintendo to release a controller 
with an analog trigger on their own so we can get there. Thanks guys for watching. Make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it, dislike it if not, and I'll see you guys next time.